Hi guys, welcome to my channel, God in the Home with yours truly, Nadine. How are you guys doing this morning? It is good to see you back again another week. Uh, if you are new, you are very welcome. And to my regular subscribers, thank you for always coming back. Feel free, everybody, to go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Is that word that you see at the bottom of the video that marks subscribe? Just tap on it and automatically you become a member of our family. And remember, in our home on this channel, God is the foundation on which we build. Today's video, guys, is kind of a get to know me video, you know, because I've started um, my YouTube channel in January of this year. And um, I haven't really, you know, tell you anything much about myself. So um, today's video is a get to know me kind of a video. So I said it already. I am Nadine. Um, I have been married for 25 years and my husband and I, we have two children. They are adult children at this point in time. I am 50 years old. Yes, I am. By the grace of God, he has kept me alive and well. And I am all of 50 years old and I give God thanks for keeping me alive thus far. Um, I am five feet tall and pay attention to the word tall. <laughs> I am five feet tall and my husband is six feet tall. So, yes, we are like this when you see us standing beside each other. One is up there and I am like right here. <laughs> but that's how it goes. Um, really and truly, I am just a regular person who gets up every day and try my best to, to please God. That is really my aim, to please God. Have I always gotten it right? No. Have I always pleased him? Is he always pleased with me? No. But then I recognize when I am at fault and then he's a loving and gentle father so I can always go to him and just repent of all of my transgressions, my unrighteousness. The Bible said that all, right, all righteousness is like filthy rags. So it doesn't matter how righteous and holy we think we are, you know. There is something in all of us. We don't reach. We don't reach. So I know there is something that we always have to go back to the foot of the cross for. Um, I have been baptized from, I believe I was 10 years old. And if I am 50 now, it means that's 40 years ago, I hope that is all my math school. The head not so good for the maths, you know. Yes. So that is, I've been baptized from I've been 10. Have I been perfect all these years? No. <laughs> I have not been perfect. I, I don't even, I, I'm never going to be perfect because there is always something. Even when you don't set out to do any, some, you know, to do wrong things, because even in your thoughts, you can think things that is just not right, you know. And that's, no, so that is why every day we have to ask God to forgive us for the things that we know that we have done wrong and also for the ones that we, 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 we might have done but don't know. You get what I'm saying? But it has been a, a journey, a daily walk. And I, every day with Jesus for me, it is sweeter than the day before. It gets better and better, and I get stronger and stronger. Has life been a better rose for me? No, it has not been. But I have just developed this friendship with, with Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. You know, I just developed this, this friendship that I am able to get through a day at a time, a step at a time. Um, I grew up in the church. I am a Seventh-day Adventist Christian wife and mother and um and and a child of god i i try my best to be um i've grown up in the church have i ever been hurt by anyone in the church yes i have been not physically but you know things have been said that hurt hurt your feelings kind of a way um has it ever caused me to think that you know, I can't bother with this church thing or to leave the church or so. No, that has never crossed my mind. Because my purpose 
for going to church, the house of God, is to be nurtured and cleaned up and all of these things by God himself, you know, and is to meet with him, to give him honor, to give him glory, to give him praise. So too are all the persons who might have said things over those years to kind of hurt my feelings and all of us because all of us have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. So just like myself, who is not perfect, who might have said or done something to someone over these years, I don't know, I try myself not try my best not to, but I'm gonna, not going to swear to you that I have never done so. I, I don't know. But just like, you know, for persons who did me wrong during those times, they are there like myself with faults that need to be taken care of by our Heavenly Father. So I, for me, I don't let what other persons around me say um, stop me from going to church and being in the church. Sometimes persons would say that, um, you know, you have a lot of hypocrites in the church, so them now come into the church and this kind of thing, but a lot of hypocrites are out there in the world, in our workplaces, in our homes. Does it stop us from going home? Does it stop us from going to work? Does it stop us from facing the world on a day-to-day -day basis? No. So why should I say hypocrites are in the church and therefore I am not going? Mm -mm. Because next thing you know, you know, the hypocrites are going to be making it to the kingdom because they would have gotten past that over the time that they, that they are there. And I am outside looking in to say I am not going in there because the hypocrites are in there and everything. And the hypocrites will make it and I am out here and I get left behind. So um, I'm not going to let anyone stop me on my journey john 3 verse 16 says that for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life family everlasting life is my goal and i hope it is your goal also it is my goal and um so i'm not gonna let something that somebody say cause me to miss out on my goal you know because that's, can you imagine we living here all this time? For me you now, who is 50, being here 50 years and if God permits me to live longer and at the end of the day, my life just go in vain, just so. I just perish just so. No, I want that which he promised and I'm sure that you want it too. So never let anybody cause you to miss out on everlasting life. Let, let us not make each other like like a brother or a sister in the church or even the pastor or anybody be our example get to know jesus christ for ourselves and let him be our example all right because we will um we will um cause we will um um what's the word i'm looking for human we're all human and we will not live up to the expectation of persons around us. We will not always live up to that. So we will fall along the way and then you don't want the person who you're having up on this pedestal cause you to just mm -mm. let Jesus Christ be the example. So if somebody offend you, you know, let the person make you leave. It's not the person church. The church belongs to God. So let him be your example. Stay there and get what he has in store for you. Okay. So yes, that is, that is what it is. Um, being married for 25 years, have I been a, a perfect wife? Has marriage always been, been a, a better rose? Well, I try my best to be a good wife. My husband would be the one to tell you if I've been a perfect wife. <laughs> but he's not here at this time that I am making this video. But um, I try my best to be a good wife, and I'm sure that I may not have been perfect in every sense of the word, whatever perfection is. But he might say perfect because maybe I fulfill the, the, his desires, his needs, whatever it is that he's looking for in a wife. And to him, I might be a perfect. So he would be the best one to answer that. But um, as marriage always been a better rose over these 25 years, my marriage. It's, it's not a better rose, but it, it takes work. 
there is going to be conflicts. There is going to be disagreement. I, I, you're going to have to agree to disagree. There is going to be um, well, um, differences of opinion because we are two individual. Yet we are one, but we are still, you know, two individuals. But then the, it has not always been that way. But one thing has never changed over the 25 years is my love for my husband and his love for me because we show it to each other. I feel his love. I give him back the love. You get what I'm saying? He treats me like a queen and I treat him like a king. Kings and queens have problems. Yes, kings and queens have problems. But then we still work out the differences and you just get over them. You have to compromise a lot too in your relationship. Um, some things, you, if something, the things that you really and truly find difficult, this is where the communication comes in, you talk. Communication is key in, in your relationship. And some things you just have to compromise. Um, but what you would say now, like for me, if I know I don't like to see see a cup put down somewhere out of place and these kind of things. Um, I can say, you know, babes, you can not leave that right there so because I don't think it look good. Da, 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 da. And he will, he listen and he will take it up. But there have been times when he might not take it up. And instead of me getting a fuss about it or anything, um, I sometimes will move it. But sometimes I will let it remain. Because I know that whenever I'm ready again to drink, he's going to want to know where the cup is. <laughs> and then he will just go right there and go get the cup to use the cup. You get what I'm saying? Oh, gosh. But if you catch me on a bad day, nobody will cuss about the cup, you know. <laughs> but sometimes it makes something. And that was just an example of something. But then sometimes there can be bigger issues and kind of thing. But, but yes, you I um it has not been a better rose, but it has been a a good journey. Would I do I have any regrets? No, I don't have any regrets. I don't. Um, I um I've been enjoying my marriage so far. I love my husband, as I said. We the union produced two wonderful children, a boy and a girl. Like I said, they are both adult children now, twenty three and nineteen. Almost 20. Boy, I get old. But such is life, you know. God has been good to us. So, anything else about me? Oh, my favorite Bible verse. It's Proverbs 15, verse 1. I'm not sure, but I think it is. A soft answer, turn it away wrath. But grievous words, stir up stirreth anger or stir up anger i think it's proverbs 15 verse 1 i must look it up but if it is not guys forgive me for that we just look up it all right <laughs> but i that's my favorite from i was a child until now i was always someone who i don't like animosity i don't like quarrels i don't like when there is disagreement me no know me, me think me allergic to them kind of thing there. Mm -mm. I don't like it. So for me, when I have um, a disagreement with somebody, I need to just squash it out and work it out and get over with it. Get past it. I like to, you know, deal with it and let it go. I don't harbor these things. Because when you harbor things, you know, you stress you out, you know, and make you look old and all them to me. Make you look ugly too. You know what I say? Yeah. I mean, the ugly thing. <laughs> to keep you happier yes so now um yeah that is my favorite scripture i like to make peace so i will always even if i am not in the wrong i will be the one to say okay i am sorry if i hurt your feelings but it was not my intention i and it's in any situation not just at home are them kind of things there and so but anyway whether it's work or anyway even if it doesn't have anything to do with me and i am in a space and there is quarrel or you know discomfort and kind of thing i would be the one to try to make 
peace between the parties that are present because I just like peace. I just don't like war. I don't like those kind of a things, you know? So I live by that verse. It, it means a lot to me. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Hmm. I like teas. And speaking of teas, guys, boy. Yeah, you would have never believed the tea when I have a drink this morning. You see? My cup. No, it, it too far. Taba a thing on it says Psalms 106 verse 1. A friend of mine gave it to me. It's white with gold handles and gold around the rim. Because it white, I don't know if I can see the word. Oh, okay, the light. But on it, it says, give thanks to the Lord. Can you see? I try to no, no work. Give thanks to the Lord. But I love these. I love nice cups. To me, cups come in like clothes. In the sense that I like, depending on the mood that I'm in, I will drink out of a certain cup. Weird, don't it? <laughs> so it's like clothes. Depending on the mood that I am in, I will dress a particular way. Fragrances is the same. Depending on the mood and the type of weather, um, I will wear certain fragrances because, you know, you get different scents when you wear it, um, depending on the weather and all of that. But the mood that I'm in determine what I wear and all of that. So the mood that I am in determine the cup that I drink my tea out of. <laughs> so yes. Um, so yes, I was saying I love teas. This morning tea, guys, is Cersei. Of all the mornings, this is Cersei. If my parents watching this video, they would be very proud of me to see that I am drinking Cersei. People, we know say Cersei bitter. And for... Those of you who are watching, if you're not familiar with Cersei tea, um, this, it, it, it grows like, like a vine and it, it grows everywhere in Jamaica. I am in Jamaica, right? So it, grow, it grows everywhere in Jamaica, all over. On the roadside, in your yard, on the fence, wherever you can find this bush, it runs like a vine. I think on YouTube, I, would, I see that some persons call it um, bitter gourd or bitter melon. Yes, but... It good for it have a lot of health benefits based on you know the research that I see. I remember when we were children, this is one of the teas that we would normally get before we go back to school after the summer. Then you know that you're going back, your parents, you are drinking something bitter. You have to get something bitter to purge, to wash out the system. So sometimes Cersei was it said it would come in like punishment. But you get older and you get wiser. So you realize that some of these things that you were getting when you were kids are actually good things for you, you know. But every now and again, you need a little cleansing. The, the, the Cersei they say is good for detoxing of the body. Now, I am not no doctor nor any herbalist or anything like that. So I'm just telling you based on information that I read when I go on um, Google or from videos that I see on YouTube and books that I read. Um, so you will find they give these information about Cersei and other herbs kind of things. But God made all of these things, you know, and put them out there for our health benefits. Every single one of these things. So from time to time, I will have, you know, a little rosemary or the, the fever grass. Some people say lemon grass or, well, this morning is the dreaded Cersei. And then, you know, you have the lime leaf and all kind of bush. We have them there. And I love to have them from time to time. This Cersei, however, they say is not one that you're supposed to have like every day like that, you know, because it's, it, it's, it's more like a detox kind of tea. So you have it like every now and again. Excuse me. So for me, you now when I drink this now, I probably won't drink no more until maybe closer to the end of the month or so. Um, because it's good for the liver, they say. Because, um, you know, the liver is like the powerhouse. It, the filter in, in your body. So it, it's, that is what 
get rid of, cleans your body of the toxins and stuff. So the liver love bitter things. So when you drink something bitter like Cersei and it get to the liver, it really like a jump start, you know? It um, get the liver going and working at a, a optimal pace. So, you know, everything good. But let me tell you my experience now since my big and drink it. Because my parents always ask, you know, you know what? I say no, I don't want it because it's bitter. But I started taking it a um, couple months back now. How? Well, my daughter suffers from eczema. So sometimes, you know, there is a breakout. And um, we've often been told that she can use it, you know, to bathe in it and sometimes, you know, take a bit, a small amount of it and them kind of things. So we decided to you know, try it and for her to use it as a bath, you know, just, and when I look up top on YouTube, it also talk about that where you can make a, a make the, the tea and when it is cooled down, you know, you put it and you soak yourself into that water and make a bath of it and you soak yourself. What we do sometimes, um, cause the time might not be there to constantly doing this. So you make enough, I put it into a spray bottle and then for our everyday use now, you can just spritz it all over your body because it helps give you nice skin and keep away the acne, the pimples, all of these kind of things. Yes, because sometimes I spray it on my face and my body, you know, and she does that too. And then you take a little internal like what I'm going to be doing now. The next thing that I use it to do is to spray it in my hair, guys. Yeah. You see how the hair looks shiny and thing? You know, see my gray hair I go on through. I go on through. So my arm, I put it into, let me show you. I'm not drink the tea yet, you know, because I know so when I drink the tea like this, this I got done. The video I got done when I drink the tea because everything mash up when I drink the tea. Hold on. Let me get the bottle and show you. So this is it now. I have this little spray bottle. So when I make the tea and it cool down, I put it in there. And then now what I do, I just... Every day, I will spritz my hair with it and I make sure that I put it on the scalp because it have, um, what I'm saying that we know, anti, anti, wait, what well, anti something. But anyway, what it do, it, it cleanses your scalp. So even if you have like dandruff, itchy scalp and those kind of things, any inflammation on the scalp, mess the scalp scalp any information information on your scalp then you just spray this on it and it gets rid of it because just as though it clears up the acne and anything it will clear up anything going on on your scalp so healthy scalp you know going to give you healthy hair what i find it does make my hair very soft and very shiny and also i don't get as much shedding that's what i noticed the the, the, the shedding is not as like it like it used to be not so much at all so i think this thing is very good S let me tell you my experience now when i drink it so because we get it and i, and we'll, I look about it for my daughter to use on her skin i decided and then she sometimes drink a little bit eventually because she never want to drink it you know because street bitter but then she want to get rid of the the bumps so she um she drink it and guys it helps it actually helped to get rid of them so I decided to so see the goodness where happened to her when she drink it. I decided to so say, I want to try too. So I drink some, wave up myself, and I drink it. One night before I go into my bed, I make a little cup and I drink. Guys, can I tell you, that was like the best sleep that I have had in quite a while after drinking that small little cup of scarcity. Not that size, much smaller than that. I slept so good, like a baby. When I wake up in the morning, I never just feel like I sleep. I feel like I felt like I was rested. I, so I don't know what happened in my body after drinking that, but I feel like a new creature when I wake up the next morning. I had so much energy. I was energized. I was ready to just take on the day. I don't know. It, it does something to your body. It does. It gives me a lot of energy. I sleep good. Good, good, good. So because of that now, and it gives you a pretty skin too, child. Yes. So because, of, <laughs> so because of all of these things, 
I've decided I start to incorporate it in my diet, in my thing, but it's bitter, you know? Anyway, but remember, like everything else, remember I'm not a doctor, so like, and I'm not, I don't know anything about these herbal things, not anything, it's things that I read and whatever, and then I'm just talking about my experiences, I've been taking this seriously. So consult always with your doctor before you use these things, especially if you are on medication. Don't just get up and just take these things just so. Have to be careful as to how we do what we do. But yes, that's one of my things. I love teas. Um, yeah. Let me drink a little tea now. Since me I thought about the tea, me drink some. But Jesus, help me. The time, no? Mercy, a lot. Ebita. Normally, when I drink this and talk and stop, because it's bitter. After just make one drink and done, but two me I talk to, me I drink and I stop. Mercy. Mm -mm. Oi. Mm -mm. I gotta finish it still, but mm -mm. <sighs> but it good. This remind me, you know, it's like the word of God sometimes. <laughs> it is not always easy to take in. It's not always easy to hear. It's not always easy to adapt to. It's not always easy to just digest. But it is good. <laughs> It is good. And at the end of it all, when you take it in and you feel the goodness of God's word in your life and you start to live it out and doing all of these things, you reap the benefits. It's just like oh, when I drink it and it bit and everything, but then when I go to sleep, oh, me just feel good the next day. Mm -hmm. Kind of so the word of God. You know, it's not the easiest thing sometimes to take and to digest and all of that, but then after we get it in and we start to live it out in our life and everything nice, you start to experience the goodness and grace and mercy of God because you now know, you know. So you start to take in it, take it in. And every day, you know, you go back and you get more, and you get more, and you start to see the benefits. As I say, I drink this Cersei and I start to notice that my our feel and my skin glowing. And, and I realize, you know, I can use it on the hair and I start using it on the hair and I use it on the skin. and. But also, while I eat, I also wash me from head to toe. See him so with the word of God. See him so, what a perfect example. Mm -hmm. Not easy to take, but when you get it, you just want to bathe in the whole light and cover yourself in it. Put on the whole armor of God upon your child. After all. <laughs> so, so, yes, so that is pretty much it. I just love God, guys. I just love him. I love the Holy Spirit. I just love to talk to the Holy Spirit throughout the day and all these things. Yeah. The Holy Spirit tell me a Bible verse yesterday morning when I wake up. And it was it's Psalms 91, I think is verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I think this is where I'm going to end this video today. The Holy Spirit just told me that yesterday morning, just as I was waking up out of sleep. He just said that to me. So, and I knew it before, but he told me. So I guess he wanted me to know it again, just, you know, reassurance. So, me not mean, so I'm going to share it with all of you guys. <laughs> so, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. All right? So, to dwell means to stay, to live there. Abide means you will remain. Also, you will stay there. So, this week, family, dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And that is a place where you and God meets and you commune morning, noon, noon and night all right guys and the shadow of the almighty is upon the face of the entire earth 
So once we dwell with him, we will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. All right? So take care, guys. Until next time, I'll see you again on God in the Home. Bye.